So I clearly can't take all the credit for these modules because um, there are lots of awesome people that help me do that. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I like to call it open source like a boss. Like a boss. Or, I mean, I have a long and boring title for this talk, but this one's just shorter. You know, like how to effectively manage open source projects, make engineers better, and save the world without losing your mind. But I thought that like a boss was better, right? Are we on the same page here? Yeah? Okay, good. Um, so disclaimer, like this is just the stuff that I've learned over two and a half years doing this. So, you know, everybody has different experience uh, in their life and deals with different people. So that will be a little bit more obvious in a, in a few minutes. So first thing first, open source does not market itself, right? How many people like found out about an open source library by chance? Like by total chance, nobody didn't like tell you about it. You're just like, mm, wow, GitHub, you're awesome. I, I did too. Okay, so that's like, 50, I don't know, 30%. So how many people like read about it on a blog? Okay, now we're getting like 80%. Yeah, so like, write about your stuff, go out there, tell people that it's awesome. Um, there's actually a great uh, blog post by one of the guys who works at GitHub called Open Source Does Not Market Itself. But you know, open source is fantastic, noble, and awesome, yes, but if you believe in what you're doing, and you probably do because you've spent a lot of time on it, you need to get it out there and get it in as many hands as possible. So just want to throw that one out there. Go out there, yell from the rooftops. It makes a better community overall. So I am a boss. Um, I, uh, I've been a CEO now for two and a half years, which is a really weird thing if you've been an engineer your whole life, because all of a sudden you have to deal with these things like feelings and emotions and politics, but it's all right. You get used to it. And I do this at Ninjutsu, obviously. Um, I think it's awesome that you're all wearing the lanyards. Uh, and so as I was saying before, what I've observed is that it's all about people. And so kind of what this whole talk is about is anecdotes about people and things that I've learned from dealing with lots and lots and lots of people. Um, and ignoring the needs of people always leads to disaster, like every time. Like if you're not paying attention to what people around you are thinking or doing or feeling, you're just going to be really shit out of luck. Pardon my French. So let's talk about people, right? People work together all over the world. Who's not from here? Who's from like a different country? Yeah, look at that. Y'all coming to Portugal to hang out. So did I. Um, so like that's cool. We all ended up in Portugal. That doesn't happen. It's crazy. People like to think and have ideas. This whole like you know free will thing that we got. It's pretty cool, right? Who who actually believes in free will? Hey, there you go. So got some free thinkers, free speech. Awesome. People have dreams and aspirations. This one I think gets overlooked a lot, especially in like big companies. Who works at a big company? How many people who work at a big company feel unappreciated? Don't worry, this isn't being videotaped. <laughs> so yeah, there's some hands, right? Because like for some reason, big companies just don't know how to make people feel appreciated and do career growth effectively. But it's like you have things you want to do, and you should be able to do them. And that obviously leads to things like fear and stress. So if you're not doing the things that you want to be doing, you're unhappy, and you're stressed out, and you look like that guy, and it sucks, right? And this stuff translates very well to open source communities. Like that guy whose pull request you just ignored for a month, he's that guy in the bottom there. He's like, why isn't this guy responding to me? Why don't I have this pull request accepted? People actually stress out about this stuff. Like, it's not a joke. And, you know, people want to be happy. So, like, why are you not making people happy? Why is, why is that not your primary function as an open source developer? Um, this one I really enjoy because a lot of times people get caught up in their work, like the person who's really stressed out about the pull request. But people make the most important choices their entire lives over things that have nothing to do with work. Work should be a very, you know, I wouldn't say small, but should not be the totality of your existence. Uh, and I think a lot of people who do open source kind of make it their whole life, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's most of my life. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, but there are other things out there, like I make hot sauce and grow hot peppers, and that's very rewarding. 
go find a hobby. So we kind of touched on this before, but people hate being ignored, like seriously hate being ignored. Like if you don't respond to an issue or a pull request or an email for like a week or two weeks or a month or ever, you need to be really sorry about that or people are just not gonna like you. Like they're just gonna be like, man, this guy doesn't respect me, he thinks I'm a jerk. And you're just like, man, I was on vacation, like relax. It's cool, we're still friends. And so this leads me to the, the next thing about people, is people need to communicate. People don't communicate, things, things break down. It's bad, really bad. But unfortunately, for all you people out there, people have problems communicating. A lot of problems. Not my problems, their problems, I guess. But, you know, so what do they need? They need, they need effective leadership, right? You need to go out and you need to be a leader. And we can't really talk about leadership without talking about Anarchy. Um, Isaac, the now maintainer of Node, creator of NPM, gave a great talk at TacoConf, which I thought was fantastic uh, about anarchy and the Node community. And that really influenced kind of the stuff that I was thinking at the time. Because, you know, I run a 20 person company. How do we, you know, push decisions to the edges of a graph? Um, so, just to sum it up really quickly to give you some background, um, generally you think about, you know, organizational structures like the mafia or corporation. Right? They're, they're like the same thing. You have like some big boss and then there's like underbosses and then underneath it there are, you know, underlings who I've put as circles and squares for some reason. Um, you know, I heard some, a, a great talk at a, a CEO conference like a year ago which is, you know, this works reasonably well but you just have to like flip it upside down, right? So instead of you being the person on the top who's telling everybody what to do, you're kind of like, well, wait a minute, like, you go do what you need to do, and all I need to do is to ask you one question, which is, you know, what do you need to be successful? And then I'll go out and I'll do that for you and use my, you know, power or whatever as your boss to go do that. And I think that this works reasonably well, but it doesn't translate to open source because the best projects, the big ones, and uh, I don't like to quote people that are in the room, but it happens. Um, <laughs> The best projects are distributed open source projects. And when you look at that tree structure in an open source community, it really ends up being kind of like a graph structure, right? Like here's somebody who like made the project and then like these are the two guys who, you know, like make the most pull requests and then these guys have a few pull requests and then they talk to each other because they, you know, live in the same place and they live in the same place. But, you know, none of you all live in the same place altogether. So you have to talk to each other. You have to communicate all of these very simple but seemingly complex things. So people work on open source projects because they love them. Who, who here works on an open source project because they hate it and they wanna like spite everybody, like screw you, I hate your project but I'm gonna contribute and spend all this time on it. I don't, nobody, I'm not really raising my hand, I'm just asking you. Nobody does that, right? Nobody does that, crazy people do that. Crazy, crazy people do that. Um, and, you know, we all do this on GitHub, right? So, you know, people do what they love on GitHub and they need to communicate. So, here's a simple solution. Make everyone a manager, right? You know, you want to do a pull request? Sure. Like, I think I, I, there was um, a great moment where I was like, yeah, I need this change on some project and the person just gave me, like, gave me the project. Transferred it to my GitHub, gave me the NPM access. Like, here, it's your project now. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> And that works sometimes if you make lots of small projects. But when you make a big project, it's like, okay, you clearly deserve pull and push access to this repo, and you need to make those decisions very appropriately, or you're going to have kind of a shit show. Um, and this is, again, another great quote from uh, the GitHub folks, which is that as a company, they don't have managers, right, formally. They just have people that do things. And it's this idea of shared responsibility that okay, it's kind of my job to make this happen, but it's really everyone's job to make this happen, and we need to work together as a team in a distributed graph structure to go out and do that, right? Like, that's why you're not really the boss, you're just the guy that has, I don't know, access to the bank account? I don't, I don't know what really to say, like, you just, you're the person who makes it done. So really, people need effective leadership with a little bit of anarchy in the age of GitHub. So. What does it mean to be a leadership? Be a leader, what is leadership? Let's talk a little bit about what leadership is not. 
you are not someone's mother. So I've had this a few times with people I've worked with, like, you know, you, they, people have problems, you don't need to solve all of them, right? A, a great saying that I heard is, you know, you don't need to get everything right, you just need to get the things that matter right. Because if you do those things, everything else will seem inconsequential. It also means that you are not the king, even though people will give you titles like BDFL or whatever. You're just a person with the stuff that needs to get done, and in order to do that, you need to talk to other people and make sure that they do that. It's definitely not something a robot could do. Definitely not. When you create policies and structures, if you're going out and policing all the time, like being like, oh, you did this wrong and that's wrong and these things are wrong, but you're doing it over and over and over again with the same people, you have done something wrong in the system that you've set up. I've seen this quite a bit with like, oh, it needs to be this code format or this or that. And, but I mean, that's not a bad thing. Like have, have style guidelines, have all those suggestions. Just have a way that you're not policing anyone, that people know where it is, go out, outline it in the README, these are the things you have to do, this is how we run things, and if you don't do it, then you've you know, broken the rules. It's kind of like being a detective, I like that. And especially when I found this graphic, because it's just, I've always wanted to smoke a crazy pipe like that. Because um, you have to go out and you kind of have to figure out what people are really thinking without asking them. So it's like, what is this dude who just opened a one-line pull request on my README really thinking? He's probably thinking that it's helpful to open a one-line README on my pull request fixing a comma in a line somewhere, but not realizing that that is totally useless. <laughs> it's also kind of like being a referee. And that goes back to what I was saying with regard to policing. Because you really just want to set up this sort of loose confederation of rules and people that act in them. You don't want to set them out and say, you have to do this and this is all you do and you do this every day. Like, that's not fun, right? Remember, people love doing this and you can't push them away by making something that they don't want to love anymore. It does require a lot of strength of mind and character. So um, I wrote a blog post about two months ago that talked about this. It was 10 things I've learned from maintaining open source modules. And if you're not ready to make open source a priority in your life, like, oh, I want to go out and hang out with my friends, but I'm going to sit at home on a Friday night and fix all these issues on GitHub, then you should not be writing open source libraries because that's actually what it takes. And when you get something that's significantly popular enough, it will be like a small child that you have to take care of all the time. And if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it because it, that's going to lead to resentment, which is going to lead to your users being unhappy, and it's just bad. So just remember, you have to have that. It involves a lot of teaching, a lot of hand holding. You got to make sure that you're taking people and taking them along that, that growth path for their dreams and aspirations. I want to be a very successful open source software developer. OK, great. You gave me a pull request. I'm going to tell you that you did a good job and make some suggestions for other things that you can fix. And, help you grow and you know, help your ego grow in the right way. Egos are not a bad thing, by the way. Feeling good about yourself is, is not a bad thing. Uh, oh yeah, and there's way too much email. Anyone who can solve this problem will be rich because email sucks and I spend way, way too much time dealing with it. But you have to, you have to talk to people, right? You have to communicate. If you're not in the same room, that means email or Skype or GitHub issues or comments on pull requests or whatever. So get used to it. And it's really, like I've said this a few times now, but I just want to like nail it home. It's about fostering communication and conversation about what you're doing. And more importantly, why you're doing it. Why are you adding this feature? Why are you implementing this library? Why are you doing it like that? Why aren't you doing it this way? If you don't answer these questions to the people who are using your code and talking to you and in your community, it's not going to be successful. Just end of story. Um, and, but seriously, remember, nobody likes to work with a bully. Uh, I like this one, especially the memory uh, icon. But seriously, like, don't be a dick. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, don't be a jerk. I mean, it's okay to tell people, like, short answers, but don't be mean, don't be a troll, 
don't do those things or else people will think that you're a troll and you're a dick and you're a jerk. And then they'll meet you in real life and they'll be like, man, that guy's actually pretty nice, but he acts like such a dick on the internet. But this one, I, I, you really got to like, you are going to make mistakes. Everybody fucks up. It happens. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't be sad. Oh my god, I made a mistake. It's never going to be this way again. You might even have to deal with some protests. Oh my god, I want fibers so bad. I'm sorry you can't have them. Stop asking. But it's okay, because people make mistakes. And you have a lot of strength of mind and character because you, you thought about this and realized that you have to have this before you get in there. And if you don't, then you're going to end up you know, parachuting out and you know, living in a slum somewhere in New York. Um, in my own experience, yoga helped a lot. No joke. Like meditation and yoga, seriously helpful. Um, I love this quote. Fight Club is one of my favorite movies. Um, the ability to let things which do not matter truly slide. So like that dude was kind of a jerk to me in that pull request, but I don't really care because whatever, some dude in a pull request just doesn't matter. You don't need to like respond to be a dick to him because he was a dick to you. Just be a nice person. Be a good person. That's so, it's that, that's strange and complicated to some people. But I'm getting towards the end here and I like to, you know, have a point at the end. So. You know. Oh, one more slide, yeah. Worst thing, if you feel like you're going nowhere, then this is all trying to avoid that feeling because, you know, oh my God, I'm not gonna get this version out. Oh, it's so many pull requests, so many refactors to do. Just do it. Just sit down and do it. You'll feel better about it. It's like a Band-Aid, just rip it off quickly. Whoop. Oh, stupid reveal. Oh, almost there. I had a point, I swear. So in the end, it's kind of like being a ninja. Because when you do things right, people won't be sure that you've done anything at all. And that's it.